Elizabeth dreams of babies, that they are connected to her body, but not to her flesh. They are attached to her clothing by buttons and zippers and snaps, and something like cockleburrs that will later be invented and called Velcro. Double-sided tape, staples, not through the flesh, and large paper clips. Babies ride in her pockets. Two of them, very still, rest on top of her hair under her hat. In the dream, she worries not so much that they will hurt her or be hurt, but that they're thirsty. Maybe she should be concerned about their mothers, but she isn't. She wonders if they could all have the same mother. She doesn't even think about their fathers, though she is in the peculiar atmosphere of dreams, aware that she is thinking about them. She tries to look at their faces, but they squirm and twist away. All the babies are dressed or swaddled in bright colors, electrifying patterns, a yellow star of David over their wildly beating hearts. There will be no hiding these babies, and Elizabeth is vaguely worried about this. But not for their safety, only that she will have to explain her voracious baby love, this immodesty of babies, this glut, this selfishness. Why do you have so many? Someone will surely ask. What she thinks but will not say is, because I can, because no one will have suspected this of me. And so, after she wakes in the morning, after breakfast, Elizabeth says to Clara, yes, yes, I will help you smuggle these children out of Dieppe and south to Paris. And she decides she won't say or think anything more about Ernst von Roth and his Polish lover or Sigrid and her marriage of convenience. She won't be afraid of what comes next and she'll try to stop rushing here and there like a sandpiper and settle down somewhere and finish a book of poems. And she decides too that she will never tell Sigrid or Louise or Margaret. She will leave it completely out of her letters to Miss Moore, to Franny, to everyone. If the story of her life is ever written, this episode will not appear, although she suspects some clever sleuth will uncover it, but not for years after she's dead, half a century or maybe longer after everyone else is dead too. Except for these babies, who will have grown up perhaps knowing that two women saved them, or maybe just one woman, Clara. They will tell their own children, the Countess Clara Longworth de Chambrun single-handedly brought us from the north of France to a convent in Paris, thus saving our lives. <laughs>